Joey, just wondering, do you think people with Trump derangement syndrome know they have it? You're an idiot. And second question, did you steal you Trump's haircut or did he steal yours? Ah! Cultural appropriation it. haircut right there. I love it, Ben. She didn't like that too much. Joey Reed, everybody. Epic. Trunk Epic. derangement syndrome. Full swing. Epic. And then the team, Real America's worry, Voice, friend. Andrew Giuliani. We got Cassandra heading in, and my brother David Zier in the house. And you, God bless you. How you doing, Ben? That was awesome. So tell us how'd that happen. Well, you, you know, you said it, you, you got to prepare for these things. And, you know, I got Lawrence O'Donnell yesterday. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I, I he kind of saw, I kind of softballed him. I said, uh, what are you going to do when Trump wins again? I, you know, kind of teasing him with that. And then I thought, you know, last night I was sleeping and I was, I was awakened in my sleep. And I thought if I see Joy Reid, cause I actually saw her in the courtroom a few, few weeks ago when I was in there, I was like, if I see Joy Reid, I have to ask, you know, the, the, the question you always ask, do crazy people know that they're crazy? And then I just thought last night, do Trump deranged people know they're Trump deranged? So I'm going to ask a Trump deranged person if they know they're Trump deranged. And then I'm like, and then I'll follow it up immediately after with her cultural appropriated haircut. And it was one of those things. I'm literally walking to the courthouse today. By the way, total sham. It's a destruction of our country. These people want to destroy our country. I know we laugh about a lot of stuff, but this is the death of our nation if we don't stop them. But in the middle of that, you still have to mock these people. And so I'm walking to the courthouse and I see Joy walk right in my line of sight, like five feet in front of me. I'm like, God's timing, God's timing. All right, so I jump, you know, jump into action. I grab my stuff, grab my phone and it, boom, got it. 10 seconds, gold, it was this, you know. But you got to be ready. You're right. You got to be ready. You got to be ready. And, dude, you got to have balls of steel cojones because people don't realize how hard it is just to put a camera in somebody's face. I know you cover the border. You cover crisis areas that most people would be very scared. So, you know, confronting Joy Reid's like a softball when you compare it to the cartel. But tell me this now. Uh, we can talk about Joy Reid and how she copied uh, Trump's haircut and how she immediately started cussing you out. Like, that was low class by her. It's like, come on. You're on MSNBC and you're going to just cuss out this other guy. That just shows you kind of her Fitting. class. Yeah. It is fitting, yeah. but you are right. What's happening to Donald Trump is the most disgusting thing that's probably ever happened in uh, New York City is a disgusting place. But I'm just saying, even for New York City, this is disgusting. He should have been charged for a misdemeanor. And this is, you know, past the statute of limitations. What do you think is going to happen now that they're trying to convict him of a felony? And I believe that there's three different felonies and that the judge has set it up that if they even think he's just guilty of one and there's even just four guilties, that will be considered a guilty verdict. Am I correct when I'm saying that, Ben? Well, you're correct in that everyone's confused by it. This entire thing, nobody really knew what the entire charges were. We've been here for the last six weeks. Uh, what, what, the, what Judge Marchant said today, and basically this is the first time anybody heard what the actual charges were we're going to be was he said that president trump had to uh to intent there had to be intent to defraud the elections process and within that there had to be some sort of willful crime but now he's saying that crime can be one of three things it can be a FICA violation of which is a federal elections violation which the state of new york has no say in it can be a tax evasion of some sort, or it can be a bookkeeping error. And what he said is, if we have four jurors that say, yep, we think he did the FICA, and we have four jurors that say, yep, we think he did some tax evasion, and we have four jurors that say he, he made some bookkeeping errors that, that we think were intentional, we can put those all together, and that can still be considered a unanimous vote. It is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard, but at the same time, it's coming from a trial where the judge voted for and financially supported the other candidate who is running in this race, Joe Biden, and his daughter is making millions of dollars, fundraising millions of dollars for the Democrat convention, Democrat uh, committee, because of the trial that's going on right now. The entire thing should be thrown out. And I think it will be ultimately thrown out in an appeals court. But just so everybody understands, Nobody cares about that. The Democrats don't care about that. Joe Biden doesn't care about that. This judge doesn't care about that. All they want is a conviction. All they want is a verdict of guilty so that they can then delegitimize President Trump, say that he's not fit to run. And it's not just Democrats. This is the rhinos, the Nikki Haley's of the world that want to go to the Republican convention and say, we can't push, we cannot support President Trump, even though he is the nominee for the Republican Party because he has a conviction. We need to replace him with Nikki Haley. That's part of it. And then the other side of that is the Democrats will say, well, he's not fit to be in office. We have to take him off the ballots. He's an insurrectionist and all this other crap. 
Uh, that's what this is about. It's about delegitimizing President Trump. And on, on the third thing that this is about is when he wins in November, because I, I believe it doesn't matter what they do, we're going to outvote the fraud. We're going to defeat these demons. And if we don't, this country's dead. I believe we are. But this is also about when he wins in November, when he takes the office in January, when these liberal tears flow across the country. This is about delegitimizing him so that the Democrats can send out their BLM, Antifa, and now Hamas brown shirts across our country to burn this country down and continue the civil war that we're already in because of the Democrats. Well, I think there's a conspiracy that they might want him in office so that they can destroy this country even more, because let's be yeah. real, his last presidency, I, the impeachment, it was all a sham. Anything that was against Donald Trump was right. li literally, it was all projection. Everything that they were doing, everything exactly they accused right. him of, they were literally doing. So with all that being said, you do think Trump's going to win. Wow. Why does the freaking conservative politicians almost hate Trump more than the left? Like, it makes me so I sick know. when you talk about these rhinos. I but I think they're worse. At least with the AOC, she's a dumb, big booty Latina, but we know where she's at, right? And she has a little yeah. integrity yeah. almost. You know, that she's, she's know. I'm saying she blindly believes what she believes and we right, know right, it, right? right? right, right, right. She's not as two-faced like these other people. So how do, we, how do we smoke that out? How do we get these fake yeah, rhinos? that's a great point. That's a great point. You know, uh, some people just say you're a pretty face, but you are an intellectual guy. I got to <laughs> tell you, that is an incredible point. This is this is the thing. I always say this: the Democrat, the leftist, they are bigger. They're they're not as bad as the threat from our own side. At least they stab us in the front. At least AOC is honest about her insanity. You know, she's an idiot. She's mm -hmm. she she doesn't know what she's talking about. Talks about the border, has no clue. That's all. You know, she. she but at least she's honest about it. It's the rhinos on the right who will stab us in the back every single time. That's why it is critical. And we had that with Paul Ryan. We had that with Reince Priebus, actually, in the cabinet. You had that with Sessions and Barr and all these other guys that didn't do what they needed to do to save this country. The key is the only way we save this country is not only getting President Trump in office, is getting MAGA across the board. That's in the House and the Senate and states and local municipalities. We have to drive out these rhinos uh, until they're 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 no longer in the party. That's the only way we save this country. If we allow the establishment Republicans to continue to stab us in the back, we're dead too. We're dead either way on other any one of those fronts. The only solution is MAGA for America.